Drummers Against Implied Timekeeping, Why is Ian Pace Great? I'm going to do a special presentation regarding the drummer for the band Deep Purple. For almost 50 years, he has been the original drummer through all their uh, changes, and he is without a doubt a legend of rock drumming. But what I want to do is to explain what makes him so great, in particular, for, from a drumming aspect uh, point of view? Now, he's been on some of the most famous songs uh, through the years with Deep Purple. Uh, but the ones I'm going to key on are not so famous, but they are just absolutely fantastic. And you need to know them, and I'll explain them a little bit as well. Uh, as a side note, uh, Deep Purple... Uh, was a band that had many versions, but when the band had Richie Blackmore in it, uh, Richie Blackmore was notorious for being very difficult uh, to deal with as a person. And you can imagine when the band got very famous uh, from the song Smoke on the Water, um, it was so hard for uh, uh, anyone to be in the band to be around him. And I say that for the fact that not just that Ian Pace was a great drummer, uh, which he was, but he also could deal with the pressure and to deal with Richie Blackmore, which, which must have been very difficult. Now, it was known that Richie Blackmore had thrown out the first version of the band, uh, uh, the singer and the bass player, when they had Hush, and then the second version of the band, he dismissed Roger Glover, who was a great bass player. But Richie Blackmore was smart enough to know he would never, ever, uh, dismiss Ian Pace. He was just too great a player and it would be uh, crazy to do that. So that will give you an idea how truly remarkable he was as a person and a drummer. Now the first track I want to tell any drummer who's not familiar with Ian, uh, Ian Pace is off the 1971 album Fireball. The track is Strange Kind of Woman. Uh, it's a slow blues uh, track, but um, I'm going to play it for you and then explain what he does here. Uh, I have it queued up here, so bear with me on the sound. End of the first chorus into the second verse, you just heard this fill. And what it is, is it's uh, either right or left you can use. Right, left, foot, foot, right, left, foot, foot, like that. That's how it goes. But he does it in successions. Da, right, left, foot, foot, da, right, left, foot, foot, one. Ba -boo, ba -boo, ba -boo, ba -boo, ba -um. Now the riff is not new. There were many jazz drummers in the 50s that did this riff. However, it wasn't until we heard it here on this recording that it was just perfect. It, it was a phenomenal thing in a line like that in succession. It was never done before. And he used to always do it live uh, every single time so you could hear him do it. It is a fantastic riff. It is a strange kind of woman coming out of the first chorus into the second verse. Listen to that. That's what makes Ian Pace great. All right? The second track I want to uh, bring forth is off of 1974. The album is uh, Burn. Uh, Richie Blackmore's still in the band, but he has a new singer, Coverdale, and a new bass player, Glenn Hughes. Now, there are a lot of great tracks uh, on that album, but what it stands out in particular all over the place, uh, Ian Pace was at his peak. Uh, the track is Lay Down, Stay Down. There are so many riffs on this record, a particular track, I, I, I just couldn't do it all. But I'll do what I think is absolutely the pinnacle of what he's, what he's doing. Oh! <laughs> 
first verse. I wouldn't even begin to play on these pads, what he's doing. Uh, but you get an idea what a beast he was. Uh, he is playing basically the time so smoothly that the vocal could be sung over uh, his basic soloing. I also want to bring out to you, when they were doing these recordings in the mid-70s or early 70s, there was no dubbing for the drums unless there was a mistake, they would make a correction. So he's doing this live to tape. Only the guitar, the vocals, or keyboards are overdubbed. So that's why I want you to understand, he's playing all kinds of improvisational riffs in the middle of a verse, and he's not moving on the time. And this is why I want you to understand how truly great he is. Now later, there is another set of riffs, and I want to tell you what that is as well, in the middle of the verse. He was doing with single pedal, bub -ba -da -bub -ba -da -bum -bum -bum, like this. I know it's loud, but they get that that sound is absolutely fantastic in the second verse. And I want you to know it, okay? Just to think of it, it was absolutely fantastic. So the song is Lay Down, Stay Down. And the first verse, the whole set of riffs there, and the second verse, the whole set of riffs there, especially the second verse with the uh, triplets. Uh, flam, foot, foot, flam, foot, foot, flam, foot is what the riff is, and done at a great uh, fast pace. All right, that is another absolutely great reason why Ian Pace is so great. It's not just the riffs, it's the, the thinking of them, you know? And the third is off the uh, 1975 uh, Come Taste the Band album. When Tommy Boland joined the band, they had a song called Getting Tighter. Uh, it was a great track. He plays it great uh, as far as a uh, timekeeping uh, perspective. But I want you to hear something that is just absolutely uncanny and difficult to do, either recording or live or any context, is the ability to switch uh, a feel of a song in time. Watch. You see what happened there. The song is moving at a pretty good clip, but the field changes in the middle, and he completely handles the change perfectly. Most drummers, regardless of style, would probably, including me for sure, speed that up. And again, I want to remind drummers, when you're recording these things, it was done live, spontaneous, with very few overdubs on the drums. And this is another thing I want to bring out to you, that one of the most difficult things for any drummer to do, obviously, is to play in time and have a good feel. But when you're changing the actual feel of the rhythm within a song and recording, it is extra difficult to do this, and he does it flawlessly. So I want you to hear that track also. Uh, uh, Come Taste the Band album, uh, Getting Tighter, uh, again. These are three tracks that I feel stand out to really solidify why is Ian Pace great. Now he has others uh, that are so uh, fantastic, Space Trucking and Highway Star come to mind, but these are three that are not famous, and I think the tracks speak for themselves. So please go on YouTube and listen to them and understand why um, he is just one of the greats. And um, he is a drummer that I think um, he is famous, uh, but maybe not as famous as other big rock drummers, but there, his legacy is, I think, uh, solid, no question, just based on what I'm showing you here. So, if you have any questions on these things, feel free to ask me. Uh, I'm on twitter.com forward slash drummers against, facebook.com forward slash drummers against implied timekeeping. Click like on that. 
And I want to welcome those of you who are coming into my channel for the first time uh, to understand that the things that I'm teaching in the open-handed position, using a double pedal and hopefully with a remote hi-hat, will enhance your creativity as a drummer. And of course, subscribe to my channel because your subscription is the support uh, that I need to continue and I thank you always. Uh, every once in a while, I like to uh, uh, just tell younger drummers from a historical perspective what makes these drummers great and why. Uh, it's not just my opinion. I want to qualify it so you have a good understanding. Okay? So best of luck. Let me know what you think. And again, those three tracks are there for you. Check them out and do everything you can to learn from Ian Pace. My best to all of you. All right? Take care.